Back to the general questions now, and Mr. Pritzker, you're going to have the opportunity first to answer the question that's coming from Erica. Well, Illinois in recent years have lost population and also businesses. Um, what is your plan to attract jobs, encourage businesses to return to Illinois? And actually, what do you think should be the role of unions in this process? Well, thank you. First of all, I'm the only candidate on the stage that's created thousands and thousands of jobs. I founded 1871, which is a nonprofit small business incubator in Chicago that's created 7,000 jobs and hundreds of companies. Uh, and uh, thousands of jobs that I've created in my own business. But one thing I know is that two thirds of all the jobs that get created in the state are created by small businesses. So you need a governor who's gonna help small businesses grow and I put out a plan to help that. Um, I also believe we've gotta invest in our infrastructure in the state. We are the supply chain hub of the nation. We've gotta make sure our roads and bridges and waterways are the best. And we've gotta invest in higher education, expand our opportunities to uh, market our agricultural products and manufacture Manufacturing. You need a governor who's going to actually market the state for what it is, the best educated, most dedicated workforce in the nation. We can work with our labor Thank unions you. to make Thank that happen. Thank you, Mr. Prisker. Mr. Diber. Sure. Um, I haven't created maybe thousands of jobs, but I've created thousands of workers uh, as a career and technical director. And all those young people have went on to seek good paying jobs. And it's with a well-trained workforce that you attract business. There's three things. Well-trained workforce supportive infrastructure and expediation and permitting. And I will tell you that if this state is gonna prosper, we have to do something very important. We have to say no to right to work in the state of Illinois. We have to rise above our neighbors. We have to lead by example that in Illinois, you can go to work, have benefits, make a good, good wage to take home to your family and be safe at the end of the day. That's what Bob Diver stands for and that's how I will grow the Illinois economy. Thank you, Mr. Diver. Mr. Biss. <coughs> You know, it's incredible to me that in the era of Trump and Rauner, here in the Democratic primary for governor of Illinois, we have two guys in this primary, J.B. Pritzker and Chris Kennedy, who are going to tell us that because of their experience as wealthy businessmen, they know how to create jobs for the state of Illinois. Let's not make that mistake again. We need someone who understands what ordinary people need. We need someone who's going to level the playing field in a tax system that not only pushes middle class families out of Illinois, but also makes it harder for small businesses because we have a tax system written by big corporations for big corporations. We need to level the playing field when it comes to regulations. And most importantly, we need to invest in the public goods, education and infrastructure that are needed to build a vibrant high wage economy in a modern society. Thank you, Mr. Biss. Dr. Marshall. Well, for jobs, we have to stop taxing uh, the people, uh, <laughs> stop taxing the uh, people of Illinois. We've got us, I'm opposed to the in, income taxes, graduated income tax, and all the other tax increases. We have to encourage people to stay here by not taxing them to death. And then we should create new jobs, legalize marijuana. That'll create 30 to 40,000 new jobs throughout this entire state, growing it, shipping it, selling it. And the other way, uh, source of jo jobs is casino gambling for uh, Chicago. That'll, that'll create tens of thousands of jobs. Thank you, Dr. Marshall. Mr. Hardiman. Yeah, also, I'd like to just add, when I say I'm the last hope for my people, I, I like to say this, because everybody wants the black vote. This is about jobs, too. But right now, the unemployment rate is 14.2% for African-American people statewide, the highest in the nation, 43% unemployment for African-American young men between the, eight, between the ages of 20 and 24 here in Chicago, Peoria, East St. Louis, and Decatur. I'm running to create jobs, and the way we're going to create the jobs, I support House Bill 453, which is the financial transaction tax. That tax is projected to bring in about $3 billion of new revenue. We legalize um, small amounts of recreational marijuana, and that tax money can be anywhere from $1 billion to $2 billion. That's $5 billion of new revenue that we can use for apprenticeship programs for all people. I'm talking everybody. We have 1.7 million people living in poverty throughout the state of Illinois right now, and that's all people. But we're going to create jobs with Thank a new you. revenue source. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Kennedy. So there's only one thing that's ever worked well in multiple cities and multiple decades in the United States to create job creation and an expanding economy is the power of education. When I graduated from high school, when I graduated from college back in the 1980s, my friends and I, we moved to where the jobs were. That's not the way the American economy works anymore. Today, the jobs move to where the highly educated young people are. Capital follows talent. If we give the world highly educated young people, the world will give us its jobs. It's right. not that hard to do to invest in education, and we're not doing it in Illinois because 
the leadership here, particularly the leadership of the Democratic Party, have outside jobs as property tax appeals lawyers. They're making money on a property tax system, preventing us from migrating to a graduated income tax. Mr. Kennedy, thank you very much. Our next question coming from Craig, and actually uh, Mr. Diber gets the first chance to answer this one, Craig. Mr. Diber, the state is facing financial problems with nearly $9 billion, $9 billion in unpaid bills, proposals for shifting the pension costs, which are gonna raise property taxes. There's cuts to social services that are concerns out there. What would be your solution to the budget mess without simply raising taxes. I've said this from day one when I announced my candidacy that within 90 days of being governor I would ask for a bond bill. I would do what's right and that's pay the state's bills. I would bond those bills. I would look at reinvesting uh, our debt, lowering our interest. Last year we wasted over one billion dollars of taxpayers money on interest payments up to 12 percent. Uh, we can do much better than that. We can take that billion dollars, reinvest in higher education, reinvest in our school systems, and put the state of Illinois going in the right direction. Until we pay our bills, can we be first in anything in the state? And then I will present a manageable budget that brings back social services for people who are asking for them to better fund our schools and pass a progressive tax that will bring the revenue in my administration to fund the state of Illinois. Thank you, Mr. Devner. Mr. Biss? Besides fixing our tax system, which I do think has to be job number one, there are other important ways that we can balance the budget. First of all, if we actually have a sustainable budget and a sane government, we will start to see people come to Illinois and invest in Illinois and begin to grow our economy. But next, when people ask about how to balance the budget using the spending side, they're usually talking about how to cut programs which is a mistake in an environment where we already are underfunding education and health care and, and human services. What we need to do instead is root out the places where the corrupt structure of Illinois government has created silos and fiefdoms inside our government and resulting in a situation where instead of having an integrated and efficient government, there's little pots of money controlled by people with political interests and greed instead of acting in the public interest. Thank you, sir. Dr. Marshall. All right, well, uh, fasten your safety belts here. What we need to do is find some way to renegotiate all of these debts and pensions. Now, states cannot declare bankruptcy, but I have proposed a bold plan that's mine and no one else's. That's to dissolve the state of Illinois and divide it up into three brand new states. These states will be Chicago, the suburbs north of Route 80, and everything south of Route 80. The beauty of it is that everything is dissolved and everything is started all over with brand new states and each state can renegotiate the pensions, the debts, every, the unpaid bills and they can start all over with a new economic outlook. Thank you Dr. Marshall. Mr. Hardiman. Yeah, the Hardiman and Avery administration, what we would do is uh, push forth the progressive tax, which is projected to bring in about $3 billion of new revenue, along with legalizing small amounts of recreational uses, marijuana, which can bring in from $1 to $3 billion, and then also the financial transaction tax, which is projected, like I said previously, to bring in about $3 billion. Combined, that's about, say, $9 billion. We would use those new funds to help balance the state budget and pay down some of our bills and move forward, because right now we're spending $25 million a day on a pension, nine billion dollars a year. That's another crisis that we have to face here in Illinois, but that's the way we would actually pay down the debts here in the, in the state of Illinois. Mr. Hardiman, thank you. Mr. Kennedy. I don't think that we can cut our way to a balanced budget, and I don't think we can tax our way to a balanced budget. I think we can eliminate levels of government. I think we can eliminate specific constitutional offices and save a lot of money. In terms of taxes, I think there are ways to tax our economy without destroying it. I think we need a graduated progressive income tax that is, uh, involves opening up the state constitution over the long term. And in the short term, we ought to adopt the Massachusetts model of a synthetic progressive income tax. I think we should tax people who live in other states but work in Illinois because I don't think we should allow tax cheats. I think we need to close the loophole that allows people to buy off the internet and not pay sales tax in Illinois. And I think the state should file undervaluation complaints against the largest properties that are undervalued. Thank you, sir. Mr. Pritzker. Well, you know, there are really three components that make up a balanced budget. People talk about expenditures and revenues, but there's also growth. If we can create jobs, if we can attract businesses to the state of Illinois, 
we can bring revenue to the state without raising taxes. Now, I happen to think we also need a progressive income tax in the state so that the wealthy pay more and the people who are in the middle class and striving to get there pay less and we're able to lower our local property tax burden. But, you know, one of the points of difference between Chris Kennedy and me in this race is I'm in favor of legalizing marijuana and taxing it. I think we can do it right away uh, in a new administration. We don't need any more studies. We can make that happen and we can create jobs and be intentional about allowing people who have been burdened by the war on drugs to be part of the licensure and have dispensaries and production facilities. Thank you very much. Thank you, John.